let's get started. I, of course, this is the Easy Chippers Game Podcast. You can hit me up with any sort of comment or tweet at EVM9000, and I respond to all of them. I have a great track record of responding every single YouTube comment. So if you comment with a question, comment, concern, or some sort of insult, we'll have a little fun. Now, remember you can support the show every single Friday with a like, comment, subscribe, or you can share with a friend. You'd be like, hey, I found this cool podcast. It's with this very attractive male. And you can share it with them. Let's start the show. Not so rapid fire. Discord voice chat has finally been added to PlayStation consoles directly through a system update. So this was in like the beta program that they have for a while, but it's finally available to the public. Very exciting as everyone assumed that PlayStation would have been ahead of Xbox with this full implementation, but clearly uh, they weren't. <laughs> they announced a full partnership um, before Xbox. And Xbox never even announced a partnership. And they were both able to start a beta and then launch it before PlayStation was both even start a beta and release it themselves. So a little embarrassing. Uh, I would at least be embarrassed if they're engineering side. Uh, because I'd be like, wow, they uh, they didn't even have a direct partnership and, and they uh, got this done before we did. So that's unfortunate, but at least it's it's through now and everyone can enjoy the benefits. I am a big fan of Discord on Xbox. And of course, I will be on PlayStation when I play there more. It's just so easy to talk to everyone on whatever platform they're on. On Xbox Wire three, three oh sorry, <clears throat> on Xbox Wire three four three is head of performance Sean Barron said that the content drought for Halo Infinite's multiplayer is over. And when speaking on Xbox Wire detailing this, they said as such, "quote In our preview of season three, I said that this is the beginning of what seasonality is for Halo Infinite, but enter uh, quote seasonality enter end enter quote." Is restrictive to me. Seasonality is really about consistency. We need to be consistent in everything. I feel very confident with where we've been done with, sorry, where we've gone with season three, and I have very strong confidence that we're going to be able to keep improving that consistency and avoid completely the long seasons of the past. We are going to be more consistent. We're going to continue to evolve the game in close partnership with our players. We're focused on shipping season three. And then, as Chief said, we're ready to get back to work. End quote. Uh, looks like he uh, heard everyone loud and clear. They need to be more consistent. I hope that is one thing that Halo Infinite can become is consistent because that is something they have far, far, far from is consistency. They have not been able to release updates. I mean, for God's sakes, they're on season three. This game launched um, quite a bit ago. And they're still kind of struggling. So let's hope for a honest uh, result from what this uh, gentleman, um, Jace, uh, Sean Barron, has said. Bandai Namco announced in its user trailer that we'll be getting an installment in the Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi franchise, widely seen by the Dragon Ball Z community as the best installment in the many DBZ games we've had we have seen in the last two decades. However, it is up in the air about any other info in this game, as the teaser was quite cryptic with hard, um, and, and missing any hard details. Yeah, so it was just a little old screen, like I was lighting up in a dark room, and it was playing all the Budokai Tenkaichi games, and like slow transition to Goku, like powering up and things. So it looks cool. I'm very excited. I love the Budokai Tenkaichi games. Some of my favorite things was that enraging blast. I loved a lot too. So I was a big fan of those. Glad that we're going to be seeing another one. Curious on which one they're going to take the most inspiration on. I saw um, it's actually uh, up in the air on what version people want. I saw some people want the original Budokai Tenkaichi with a you're in a 2D space and you're able to operate in a like 3D like Tekken where you're able to like move between um, kind of states of the 2D plane in that 3D environment. And there's also the uh, people who want the arena combat from Budokai uh, 3. So it's really up to them on what they make. Um, it looks like it will... Mo I, I, if I had to bet money, it's going to be more like the third one with being able to fly and these things. Uh, I love seeing all the tweets. I love seeing how many people loved and re are fondly remembering Budokai Tenkaichi 3 um, and 2 and 1. With how like uh, everyone's showing off like Super Saiyan Four Goku and how like in uh, if I remember right in Tenkaichi Three, you could literally be Goku and transform into any of 
the other transformations, which was really cool, and no game really does that anymore. So hoping that's something they keep as it is. Um, it does make sense that if you play as the character, you can change into any of the uh, powered versions. So I'm very excited for this. I cannot wait to see more. Let me know which game that you want to see more of in the comments below. Do you want this to be more like Tech IQ 3? Do you want this to be more like a new game or some sort of reboot of, of that nature? Do you want it to be something like Fighter Z, but in a 3D space? Who knows? If you pre-ordered the Resident Evil 4 Remake Collector's Edition at GameStop, you may be out of a pre-order. First reported on by Warrior64, anyone who pre-ordered in-store, the Collector's Edition has had their order canceled, and many who ordered online may have also lost their pre-order as well. If you experience the cancellation of this order, you will be receiving $10 off on the Standard Edition. It'll be a little coupon, apparently, that they give you in your account. Uh, Flat-out embarrassing. I imagine this might be... Capcom's fault, maybe because they didn't tell them the right allocations of units or something. I don't know. I don't know how you mess up this bad. Uh, of course, uh, it's not shocking the GameStop to mess up this bad, but it's very shocking how badly they messed up with how many people they have to cancel. Everyone who walked into a store and pre ordered one has to have their thing canceled. It's shocking, and they're actually losing quite a bit of money on this. Not only are they missing out on the guaranteed sales that they thought they'd get. They're also missing out on $10 on every edition that if, if anyone sticks it, buys it. And also you're missing out on people who feel like they got burned and they're just going to go buy on Amazon right now. Definitely something they could not afford to happen. Season 9 of Sea of Thieves will be launching soon. And alongside the announcement of new things coming to the game came the announcement of a documentary called Sea of Thieves, Voyage of a Lifetime. Quote, featuring previously unseen footage and a candid look at the highs and lows of Sea of Thieves development and release. This honestly an in-depth doc pulls back the curtain and shows the game's evolution in the most detailed and raw way it's ever been discussed, said Christina McGrath, head of community and communications of Rare. And this was pulled from the Xbox Wire. End quote, of course. Uh, very cool. We very rarely get these kind of rare in-depth looks, uh, these in-depth documentaries, um, especially from the studios themselves, so I'm happy. I... Uh, actually loved the Xbox Power On documentary. By the way, free documentary. If you have an Xbox, just go to Microsoft Store, download it. It is a fantastic documentary. I loved it. Love, 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 love it. Loved it. Everyone should go check it out if you have even a passing interest in the Xbox. Now, there is a new Xbox controller, by the way. Also, Velocity Green is a lime green controller. It looks actually very nice. Looks very nice. Enjoy it. What have you been playing? Of course, this is where I ask myself, but also I ask everyone at home. Achievers, what have you been playing? Now, I'll give my thoughts, and then you can, of course, come out, co comment down below or give me a tweet on what you've been playing. Now, I have been playing Shocking Destiny 2. I know that's Kirby mind blowing. And also, I played a little bit of Among Us, actually, too. Like the hung hide and seek mode. So uh, I had played as I'm gearing up again for the uh, day one raid. Technically, day two raid whatever you want to call it. Um, I've been practicing in, in Destiny and all these things, getting everything ready, um, praying to any sort of god that will listen and see if I can get this clear done. Um, but aside from that, I played a little bit of Among Us, played that new hide-and-seek mode that was very fun. You literally just hide-and-seek, you do tasks to, like, um, you have, like, a certain time when you can do tasks to, like, speed up the bar and these things. It was very fun, especially with, with uh, the amount of people I was playing with and the type of people I was playing with. It was very fun. I, I had a, a blast playing Among Us. Of course, more Destiny 2. Um, nothing to really report here. Just grinding out all the stuff that I need to be doing to be ready for the uh, Worlds first. So, Rumor roundup. Reported on by VGC and spotted by Twisted Voxel, Neon White, the critically acclaimed single-player speedrunning FPS game made by Angel Matrix and published by Annapurna, has been rated by the ESRB for Xbox systems, almost guaranteeing the game will come to Xbox systems soon. Also report, um, this almost guarantees that it's coming. Uh, things don't just get rated for fun. You don't, that, that doesn't happen. I don't think that's ever happened unless a game has been straight out canceled, uh, which I think has only happened like one time. I think NCAA basketball. No, no. Was it NBA Live? I think it was NBA Live 13. Something like that. It was one of those NBA Live games that was like canceled when it was done. 
which is hilarious. I mean, really hilarious if you think about it. Uh, that's all I have to report, though. I'm very excited for um, Neon White to come. I wouldn't be shocked if it comes to Game Pass day one. Uh, it just seems like a perfect game to do that. We'll see when it comes, as if it's dated already. It's 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 soon. It's soon. According to Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier, Rocksteady, the makers of the highly acclaimed series Batman, uh, the uh, sorry, the Batman Arkham series, and currently working on Suicide Squad, will be delaying their game possibly due to the poor reception of the game during their most recent showing at the PlayStation State of Play. Although Jason Schreier gives no dates on, on its push, the game was originally stated for May 26th and will now release sometime later this year. Um, quite shocking. I thought they were going to stick to this, even though they were getting poor reception um, on the demo. Uh, or uh, Yeah, yeah, demo. They kind of showcased the demo. Um, when I read this, this actually broke this eh, this afternoon, I'd say. Um, I think it was around one or something. Um, I was, again, I was quite shocked as I figured Rocksteady was confident in what they had, even though people didn't like it. I mean, what is delaying it going to do in a couple months? Like, you, are they, you know, I, I'm always down for delaying anything um, to make it better. Uh, but I'm just shocked that it seems to be in such a response to people disliking me. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to make it prettier or something? Um, as long as you squash all the bugs, I mean, hey, I will take a bug-free environment. Uh, I hope no one is getting their hopes up with this delay. This is not going to do anything to the core game that we play. It's still going to be the Suicide Squad uh, games as a service thing that looks like everything else. I am still excited. Um, I would have been more excited if it was an actual Rocksteady game. Uh, but let's see if we like it because it, it, it looks fun to play. Uh, it just lacks, I think, any like real depth of feeling because like you're immediately hit with like all this gear and these things. And it does at this point, it does get a little tiring because there are so many games as a service. Hopefully, this is games that, like a small, like lowercase games as a service, and it's not going to really demand too much. Reminds me of the division where it technically it was a game as a service, but like it, you really were fine like checking it every now and then and playing it a little bit, or you could stay for a long time. Like it, it's really fine. So I hope it's not too heavy and annoying where like there's time gating and all these things I, I hope it's just there's the game and co-op is like an optional thing which is all what we all hope to for gotham knights and gotham knights is technically that so hopefully we get like more of a gotham knights which is hilarious because i'm sure many people at home are like uh, i don't want gotham knights i i, I get it but like uh, the gotham knights was at least respectful of like your time in the world, like you weren't bothered. Like when you started playing it, you were playing the game. You weren't like told like about all these other things in the store or anything like this. So hopefully it's closer to a experience similar to a Gotham Knights where it just leaves me alone and I get to play it. Nintendo Live reports TT Games, the makers of the mega popular Lego games, states that there will be several. Can Let me start this over. Nintendo Life reports TT Games, the makers of the mega popular Lego games series, states that there will be that, that there were several canceled projects at the studio recently. Now, the reason seems unclear, but we will get to that in a second as I want to discuss some of these projects. According to Nintendo Life, Project Marley was set to be a giant Disney collaboration game featuring characters from Frozen, Muppets, Winnie the Pooh, and more. Uh, there would also be kind of like uh, quote, Diablo-like dungeons, end quote, in the game as well. I can't even imagine what this game would look like. I guess it would straight up just be like, ooh, excuse me, like a Lego Disney, but like the main objective would like have dungeons and things you'd go in and there'd be gear. I, I don't know, but it sounds that uh, this game was in development um for quite a while. Let's let's discuss the rest. The release of Disney Dreamlight Valley reportedly led to this game's loss of direction. And after four years of being made was canceled, which a lot of time, a lot of money to just cut, uh, just throw that out. Um, they can't afford it. I'll talk to you in a bit why. The next project is Project Cosm Cosmic. Uh, this would have been a Guardians of the Galaxy Lego game, similar to many of the Lego tie-ins and movie adaptions that they've made previously. This was canceled after 18 months. So, fairly quickly canceled. Uh, I am shocked that they did this. Now, with all this said, it does seem that t uh, TT Games uh, waste uh, seems to be lost, which is surprising as their previous game, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, sold incredibly well, despite some negative critical reception. Lego Star Wars was charting for months after the fact that it, that it launched. Uh, so it, def it definitely sold quite a bit 
um, to the point where it was like one of last year's, I think, best selling games. So they made money. So which is might be a way of justifying like canceling these games and not finishing them off. And they're able to like justify something else. I'm surprised that Disney Dreamlight Valley destroyed them that much. If if the report is to be trusted, um, it is shocked to hear like that that game. I mean, I've seen it played. It, it, it that has that had like such to do that made you that messed you up that bad. I'm shocked. Maybe they were worried about um saturation in the market or something. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I mean, Disney is pretty saturated right now, so I I don't see that this would have been any different, but. It is sad to see that that specific project uh, is finished with because sounds like it would be fun, maybe like being Elsa and shooting an ice pick at like a zombie or something. Sounds hilarious. Uh, project Cosmic. I'm su- that's probably actually something that you think be a slam dunk for Lego. They love their tie ins. They love their adaptations. I wouldn't have I would have been uh, happy to see a Guardians of the Galaxy with like they did one and two and then leading up to the third one launching they do the third one or something i don't know but pretty shocked that they just kind of quit on that one too maybe they just weren't gonna have it done in time that guardians was still relevant maybe i don't know but i i am interested to see why they quit i'm sure let's start the show Xbox Game Studio announced that they'll be having a summer showcase and it will take place on June 11th. With this announcement came two confirmations. We'll be having a Starfield showcase right after, and Starfield, due to launch in the first half of 2023, will now be released on September 6th, 2023. This marks yet another fall in the Xbox Game Studios and delivering anything of substance that can be compared to the other two major console manufacturers. So, we got word that we're getting a... E3-like showcase uh, that we've come to expect from Xbox Game Studios. Um, Let's hope we have games this year because it really does look like we have two games. We have Redfall and we have uh, Forza Motorsport at some point and we're going to get this game, uh, Starfield. So, cool. I would like uh, something else uh, or at least have a clear understanding of next year because how many times do we have to say this why do we have to keep saying we'll get something next year it's getting tiring i would love xbox to actually start releasing something because it's been way way too long and our halo infinite which was supposed to be like the system seller fell flat on its face and i I mean flat on its face it completely completely released to no no nothing keeping it going it it, critically it did greatly uh but they clearly missed the overall point the campaign was great and no one liked the multiplayer or sorry everyone liked the multiplayer but they didn't update anything it released incredibly blandly uh and had no consistent updates i mean compare like what you have now to like release it's pretty pitiful especially when you compare to other things uh, it's quite shocking too that that's a Halo game right now. Uh, it's, no, sorry, it's 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 shocking that the Halo game reserved that true, right? You think the Halo game was guaranteed to be good, and I see a lot of people saying the same thing that that we said about Halo, like, oh, it's, Xbox won't let this be bad, and this isn't quite the same thing. This is Bethesda. This isn't really Xbox. I still, we all still view Bethesda as a separate entity, even though they are wholly owned now by Xbox. But we do still kind of view them in a different light than we do like coalition because it's, there is no separation. They, and I think they made it clear that they want to be separated from Xbox. They don't want to be called Xbox. They want to be called Xbox and Bethesda when they're talked about. Um, so I think that's clear. That they would still want to remain separate from the Xbox name. I wonder why. Uh, but hey, hopefully Redfall's good. I think it will be. That's it. coming very soon. I believe it may. And I am hoping that we get something, something truly, truly special with Starfield because it did not demo well. That demo did not look great. So let's hope we get 60 frames. Let's hope we get a very, very, very good shooter. I think we will. I am a little worried because the entire reason Fallout is the way it is is because they couldn't make a shooter. They had to make a VAT system that like actually made guns feel good. Because it just auto aims for you and rolls the dice in the background. Um, so 
Uh, but let, let's hope that we actually get something. This one. And of course, we, uh, I didn't specify this. We do have a shorter uh, episode this week. Not that much news. And that's it. We got date updates coming up for you. So let's go over to Xbox Wire 4. Everything coming to Game Pass this month. Now, available as of recording, we have Guilty Gear Strive, cloud console and PC. That's very, 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 very good to get from Xbox, by the way. Guilty Gear Strive. Always hear good things from that um, particular fighting game, and there you go. Now, this is also as of recording and as of you are listening, you're getting Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3 all coming to cloud via EA Play. Um, and then next up, we have Valheim coming to a Game Pass March 14th. That's going to be a game preview, and that's coming to only consoles. Um, Valheim, of course, is that uh, exploration survival game. You can like do up to like 10 people. Uh, and it's like a survival game, it's similar to like Rust or something, I think. Uh, not my type, not, not my type of game. But my, it is my type of game. It's coming up. Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Cloud console and PC, March 16th. Incredible, incredible game here. I very much highly recommend anyone, if you have Game Pass, check this out. Because this is an incredible strategy game. This is a legendary in the strategy game community. This is kind of, in my opinion, the best one out there. I think people, some people disagree and say uh, there's other ones. But to me, this is the perfect Civ simulation game out there. I love it. They have so many different um, cultures and uh, different ways of winning. I always love a good economic win or cultural win. Uh, I just love this game so much. Check it out. Inu Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom, the Prince's Edition, is coming to con console and PC March 21st. And that's everything coming to Game Pass this month. Uh, everything leaving March 15th. Reminder, everything that I'm about to read is leaving March 15th. So you have a couple days to claim your 20% off your purchase if you buy it before it, it, before it leaves. F1 2020 uh, uh, console is leaving. Uh, this, that was via EA Play. Goat Simulator to Cloud Console and PC. Kentucky Route Zero, Cloud Console and PC. Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy, Cloud Console and PC. Paradise Cl Killer, Cloud Console and PC. Undertale, Cloud Console and PC. Young Souls, Cloud Console and PC. Zero Escape, The Nonary Games, Cloud Console and PC. Very strange name there. And that's everything leaving Xbox Game Pass. Now next, Wargra Wargrave 2 has been announced. No official release date was given, but I know a lot of people very much enjoyed the first game. So there you go. You have the second one coming very soon. Hogwarts Legacy's last-gen versions will be delayed a month. Formerly April 4th, now the last-gen versions will launch May 5th. Sword Art Online Last, Recollect last Recollection will launch for PS5, uh, Xbox Series S and X, PS4, Xbox One, and PC on October 5th in Japan, and October 6th worldwide. Metroid Fusion will be added to the Game Boy Advance on Nintendo Switch Online service, uh, I believe as of recording. City Skylines 2 will launch this year on PS5, Xbox Series, SNX, and PC. PS Plus Essentials for March are as followed. Battlefield 2042, PS5, PS4. Minecraft Dungeons, PS4, and Code Vein for PS4. And that is your news for the week. Now, we have what's queued up. This is, of course, a game that you could be playing over the weekend. This is a game podcast, a book, a comic book, a movie. TV show, anything really. Let me know what you have queued up for the weekend. This is, of course, not only for me to answer. This is for everyone at home to answer. You can, of course, comment or tweet at me at a 1000 and I answer any and all questions, or we can just talk about what we got planned over the weekend. Now, what's queued? Uh, you already know. I already told you. Uh, Destiny 2, trying to get the 24-hour, te technically it's 48 hours now, 48-hour completion done. I'm hoping to get that finished. Uh, to secure the emblem and feel good about myself. That's, that's literally the only reason. You don't get anything special. You get a little emblem that looks pretty, and, and you get to say that you did it uh, for, the, uh, for the rest of the time. So that's really it. That's all I have queued up. I actually do want to go, ahead, go back and finish Hi-Fi Rush. I do have that very close to being completed, and I do want to go back to Dead Space as I only cracked the surface of that. I believe I'm in Chapter 4. Chapter 4 of that game, so I need to play more of it uh, and completely finish that out. I have... Quite a while. The next game isn't until Resident Evil 4 later this month. And I still have two weeks for all that. So I have plenty of time to uh, finish up Dead Space, finish up Hi-Fi Rush, and maybe even squeak something in. Octopath, Octopath Traveler 2 is out. I do want to touch on that. 
Uh, definitely won't have time uh, before the next recording, but I do want to have that at least tried. Excuse me, before Resident Evil 4. Now, that's all I have for you this week. It was a short recording, but every now and then we need a short recording for because the show should only be as long as it needs to be, right? That's what I think. I never think you should, like, artificially lengthen anything that uh, doesn't require it. So that's that's going to be it from me. I want to thank everyone for tuning in this week. I want to thank everyone for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, and your sharing. Because that's what keeps me going. Remember, go cheap.